Hi everybody and welcome back to my painting channel. Today is a very very special video for me to be making. It's a milestone. It's also a big big thank you and on top of that it's a giveaway. Somewhere in there I might just throw in a painting tutorial for you as well. So let's roll that intro and let's see exactly what's been going on. Hi everybody and welcome back to the painting channel. As I said at the start, this really is a very, very special video for me to be making. Now, during the course of this week, I absolutely smashed through that 10,000 subscriber level on my YouTube channel. And I just wanted to take this opportunity to thank each and every one of you. Those of you who've just come on recently and those of you who've been with me since the start. Thank each and every one of you for all that support you give my channel. For all of you who have been watching my videos over a period of time and have commented and corresponded, I just thank each and every one of you for that great support moving forward. Hey, and what do I want to do? Well, my next goal will be that great big level of 100,000 and that big silver play button. I have no idea if I will ever get there, but with your help, your support, spreading the word, it will be more likely than not likely in due course and i look forward to actually getting there one day but i just want to say a big big thank you for all of the support so far and reaching that lovely goal of 10,000 subscribers now with that all said and done it wouldn't have helped it wouldn't have happened so quickly without the help of two really lovely people out there and a few weeks ago a lovely person a lovely lady from america jenna rainey Many of you know or have heard of her channel, and if you haven't, you should hop foot it over there right away. But Jenna really kindly put out a video where she was helping some smaller channels, and she championed mine, along with some others, uh, for her subscribers to go and take a look at and get involved with and sign up to. And that's exactly what happened, and that gave my channel a real big boost. And then subsequently, last week, many of you know, Paul Clark. Paul has got a fantastic channel and we have ch we chat often and he's a really lovely guy and a great teacher and if you've got things to learn uh, about watercolour he is really a go-to uh, place for that. Now Paul did a shout out for my channel last Wednesday. I woke up in the morning to find my numbers were just escalating out of the roof. I had no idea why until I realised that it was Wednesday and Paul put his channel, uh, his video out for the week and in it was a lovely shout out. So Paul and Jenny, thank you guys so much for the support of the channel and uh, giving me that little leg up and I smashed that 10,000 subscriber level. So thank you both very, very much. Now, what else? Well, I wanna celebrate this milestone. I wanna celebrate with you guys all the support that you've given me. So what I wanted to do is I'm gonna take that picture that you're gonna see me paint in a moment, all about that lovely meadow, that beautiful uh, abstract meadow painting. I'm gonna give that away to one of you. What you need to do is put a comment in this video or underneath this video. What will happen is that I will give it say two weeks, something like that, and for all of you who put a comment in the video or underneath the video, you need to be a subscriber. So if you're not, get up there and hit that subscribe button, click that bell icon and click the notifications. That will tell you when I upload a new video. But if you're a subscriber and if you have subscribed, then please put a comment underneath this video. And all you, you can say what you like about the video. I hope you say some lovely things about it. But in that sentence or whatever comment you put down you need to put the phrase in uh what are, what are these called whatever they're called put the phrase in it to win it simply in it to win it and what i'll do by the magic of online sources i'll put all the names that are in there in it to win it in the comments and who are subscribers and i'll put them into a little machine and on live on another video in say two weeks time, 
I will pick a winner and that winner I will contact and get their details and send them off that painting, the original painting from today's video tutorials. So without further ado, let's crack on. Let's get on with this lovely abstract meadow. I see you at the other end. I hope you enjoy it and I do hope you have a go at it as well. So eyes down, let's get on. Hi everybody, welcome back. Just a little bit of information for you. The paper is 140 pound rowney hot press paper. The colors are a split primary between two blues, two reds, two yellows, plus Payne's gray and a lovely orange. I'll also be using some masking fluid in this as well. The pencil is a propelling pencil from Faber-Castell. It's got a two millimeter thick lead and it's a 4B. Now I like to hold the pencil loosely between my fingers and thumb. That way I can lay it down and that longer lead helps me create some more loose pencil marks. I'm still using a lot of detail, but they are a lot easier to create holding the pencil this way. You become too exacting if you hold your pencil as if you were writing a letter. And I'm using this now to create the main structure of my painting, which is this big old thistle that is in the sort of near foreground. It's the most dominant shape in the painting and I'm using that as my first port of reference, but I'm coming across with a few of these other loose marks, the diagonal shape to a second thistle that you can just make out in the reference to the right hand side. Now the first colour I'm putting on is a wash of orange and Indian yellow. A lovely simple wash, the sort of consistency of tea, bringing it all the way down through this painting. I will be masking but I didn't want to leave the white paper on this instance. I wanted to make the colours completely uh, free of white paper. So I need to let this dry out totally before we carry on. But I'm going to put in a little warmer colour. I just fancied a little bit more orange into this and just make it a little richer. And so that's why I came over. But there was a bit more pigment in this time and so that it didn't cause a cauliflower. And then I used a spray bottle just to influence it and release that paint to run down the remainder of the page, keeping it nice and clean. Now I am taking out a little bit with dry towel. I'm dabbing, I'm creating or lifting some of that orange paint out and creating these little dots, like bokeh. Uh, it's just a very simple form, a clean towel. Keep changing the paper over so that you don't redeposit color. And with that done, I'm gonna let the whole thing dry up totally before we do any more, because the next stage will be to add some masking onto this. Now I'm using drawing gum from Pebio. It's blue and it's easily decanted into a little pot. And I'm using a cheap plastic uh, pipette to actually add this onto the painting. Initially a few dots and a few dabs and just splatting it. And with easy pressure on the bulb at the end, you can push a little bit more out at given times. Lots of little taps, lots of little marks. I'm trying to look at what I can do and I'm almost drawing with this stuff. I'm not actually painting it on, I'm scratching around and drawing, creating the long thin stems of long dry grasses. Now I decided, let's use my fingers, let's do a bit of finger painting with this stuff and create some bokeh, some lovely little round spats of light sources in the far distance. And that's what bokeh is, it's just out of focus light spots and I will add more of this later, but I'm coming in now and drawing still, adding a few more bits of light uh, areas that what happens is that when I paint over this, once it's dry, then I can add more colors and I'm preserving all those light ones underneath. But we're pretty much finished with this section and I'm gonna wait now, let this whole thing dry before we move on and do anything else to this painting. I'm mixing up a lovely uh, magenta and ultramarine mix, just tempering it down with a little bit of orange and just making a beautiful uh, color with the blue and the magenta. And I love what this is doing because what's happened is 
I'm keeping all those lovely light bokery marks for later on. But I've come in with a much darker colour and a much cooler colour. And I'm using the spray bottle just to push it around the canvas. Now the whole thing about this painting, when you talk about rules, is there are no rules. All I'm doing is observing maybe things like the warmth in the distance, the mid-tone cool colours, and these really hot colours in the foreground. And by the use of different methods, such as a spray bottle, adding more pigments, just playing around with them, I can create some wonderful looks and textures. But it is rather abstract, and the final outcome is not clear. Another little device is I'm using a palette knife just to score into the paper surface. Yes, it's damaging it, and the paint will go into those and create dark marks, but it's just another divisive method to create something different. I wanted to create some lovely glows around this bokeh that I put on initially with the masking fluid. So I added some oranges and some yellows to that. And I used a spray bottle just to lessen the effect. I didn't want any hard edges. I just wanted that glow to then diffuse into the background. I use various types of greens from cool to very hot and very dark just to suggest different levels of foliage and looking into them and seeing different levels of shadows within them. And as it come down to the foreground, I added more reds into them, but I didn't want hard edges. Again, I resorted to the spray bottle to diffuse the information. I really had a lot of fun with that, but now I've got to let the whole thing totally dry before I move on. And here we go with the second layer of masking. So what I've done is I've protected the first layer of color, that lovely bright color with the masking. And now I'm drawing back in onto some of it, over some of it, adding more layers and protecting the colors that I've recently been putting on. So we have two levels of masking going on. There's a lot more information going in and I'm actually again drawing with this and adding a few lights around some of the potential flowers on the thistle and I'm about to add some more bokery effects and the thing with this is I took some off of the page so only half come in and then I added some across halfway on some of the other dots that already exist so I tried to break it up and create more. The whole idea though of making a darker passage of paint through here is to make sure that when we take the masking fluid away that those lovely pricks of light that we've created really stand out. There is an old thing that when you want something to appear darker, make everything around it light and vice versa. When you want something to appear very light, make everything around it darker. So 
So having allowed the painting to dry thoroughly, I am now applying a much creamier uh, set of paints. Now, less water, more pigment, a creamier solution in a sense. And I'm trying to draw with a brush. I'm using a long sword liner, but you could easily use a dagger as well. I'm suggesting some more structure in some of the weeds, some of the grasses that are growing up so that you can actually identify it with some of the plant life that's going on. I didn't want to make it too much of a reality. I just wanted to suggest that there are plants and weeds all around what will be the thistle. Coming in with a bit of dark now with greens, I'm using basically Payne's Grey and some orange and maybe a bit of blue in there just to create the darks of the thistle itself. So with that done, I let the painting dry off completely before I get into the next messy part, which is, of course, taking off all that masking fluid that I had applied. Now, do it with a tissue paper. If you don't, you're going to run the risk of putting grease from your fingers. And the amount that's on here, I've got to tell you, it have ended up with blisters too. So use a paper towel. It's much better. But please, please, please make sure your painting is absolutely bone dry before you do this or you risk wrecking the whole thing and it tearing into your painting itself. Now I'm coming in with a round brush and I'm putting in some blue violet shapes they are the flower heads. I actually missed these, to be quite honest with you. I hadn't realized it, but I hadn't allowed for them. And I wanted to get those in because they have that lovely, cool accent to all those warm parts of the plants. Now I'm using a rigger and I'm putting some more structure, some darker marks in with some uh, Payne's Gray and some of the pyrrole orange. And using some of that pyrrole orange just to give a glow to some of this. Losing some of that whitish mark of the... Uh, masking fluid is left and then tapping off so I'm giving a glow I'm adding another little bit of a wash a little bit of flat wash to some of the areas to give that extra warm glow to the foliage right in the foreground all I'm doing now is adding a few structural lines to indicate some grasses right in the foreground and across some of this bokeh to break up those shapes and make them look a little more realistic but with that said and done I have had a heap of fun painting this painting and I do hope that you've enjoyed it and got something from it. And don't forget that the reference for this will be over on my Patreon. Pop on over to my Patreon channel. The details are under this video. And you can download this for free. You don't need to be a patron to do that. Just download it and have a go at this project yourself. And put it on the free Facebook group or page, Painting with Paul Apps, that I'd love to see it. So whilst you're over on my Patreon, why not check out the tiers? There are over 90 plus full length, fully narrated videos there already. Lots of tips and how to's and that's growing week in, week out and each month. And there is also a Facebook community group dedicated just for my patrons to get in touch with me and each other. So I'd love to have the chance to welcome you aboard as my latest patron. That would be awesome. In the meantime, have a go at this little competition. Put in it to win it in your comment and you do stand the chance of winning the original. And it just remains for me to say happy painting, everybody. Stay safe wherever you are. Catch you all in the next video. Take care. Bye bye. Be able to make and I will hopefully let you know everything in due course. No, start again. Video and it's a giveaway, so let's roll the intro and let's see what we're all about. What we're all about? Don't think so. Am I taping? Yes, I am. It's a giveaway and a special video 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 to touch channel done it again hi everybody and welcome back to the channel now as I said at the start this is an extremely very an extremely very and yeah if you're watching this and you're not a subscriber you know what you gotta do you gotta hit that subscribe button and gotta click that bell icon and you've got to click the no, 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 notifications. That one. 
<laughs> this really is a very, very special video for me to be making. During the course of the week, Hell of a lot of outtakes. 